we follow two young journalists to Somalia, where terrorism, armed conflict, drought and famine threaten everyday life. They say it's exacerbated by climate change, and the human consequences are many, as you will see in this collaboration between ABC News and the Ground Truth Project. Here's Nightline co-anchor Byron Pitts. Somalia. A coastal nation home to approximately 11 million people. It's the kind of place we, the outside world, rarely see. Having fallen into despair since that civil war in 1991, rampant attacks by terrorist groups like Al-Shabaab, this is a country in the grip of conflict. For many Americans, it's that grim place where U.S. service members were killed, retold in the movie Black Hawk Down. Scientists now say the country is facing a new threat, global warming and it's pushing Somalis to the brink. Kenya-based journalist Laura Heaton and Nicole Sebeki embark on a journey to show how people here are being devastated by climate change and environmental destruction. They set out to follow in the steps of a man who had been ambushed and kidnapped in 2008, British scientist Dr. Murray Watson. Have you ever heard of a guy named Dr. Murray Watson? He was here mostly in the 70s and the early 80s. Watson had taken these images of Somalia in the 1980s, which show a country lush with life. His disappearance remains a mystery to this day. I think we found the spot where this photograph was taken. Using his photos as a guide to track how the land has deteriorated, they trek across the country, meeting the people whose lives have been shattered by a changing environment. Mumina Farah has spent weeks crossing this desolate landscape. She's part of a community trying so far in vain to find fertile land. We call it Duga, or Berry. It has buried everything. A severe drought set in two years ago is drying up food and water and killing the livestock, a lifeline for these communities. I lost 100 goats, 10 cows and camels, and four donkeys. It has already killed the animals. We believe humans are next. With this weather pattern, Somalia or Somalis will not survive. Maybe the land, a piece of desert called Somalia will exist on the map of the world, but Somalis cannot survive. That's a fact. 6.2 million Somalis are now in urgent need of humanitarian assistance, according to the UN. They say it's the worst humanitarian crisis since World War II. We'll eat each other alive because this environment is not giving us anymore and the survival will depend on the strongest. In my 45 years, I've never seen this kind of a drought that has killed our animals. It's the worst one. For years, Dal Muhammad was able to support his family off his small farm and animals. But when the drought hit, his crops failed, and now almost all of his livestock has died. Livestock brings wealth, and if you don't have livestock, then you don't have a way to survive. He's working against the elements to try and hang on to what little he has left in fears how he will provide for his family. If you have a family and you lose your livestock and there is drought, you'll do anything to feed the children. If the drought continues at this rate, farmers like Ali Yusuf stand to lose what little they have left. I believe if it continues to be this way, I think that there will be no life. May God not make that happen. I think that in Somalia, or even in Africa, if that happens, life will not continue because people depend on rain. Ali is lucky to live next to a community well that he can use to irrigate his crops and feed his family, for now. Ali's family knows firsthand the kind of violence that can be sparked by the effects of an increasingly parched environment. This bullet was shot from behind that tree where the person was hiding. He tells us that just two weeks earlier, his cousin Mohammed was murdered in a fight over land, shot twice by another man. Evidence of that shootout still visible. If the rains continue to be less and less, we'll all lose what we have. Some have taken to the sea for resources. But the food supply there is also dwindling. It's early morning at the Basaso port in eastern Somalia. Today's catch was a good one. There's no telling if tomorrow's will be. 
Illegal fishing by foreigners is pilfering the food supply and destroying the marine life. Some Somali fishermen have taken matters into their own hands. They are the ones who attacked us, taking with them our fishing tools, the lobsters, and the sharks. Abdi Qadir Hassan is a former pirate who took to the sea to fight back. He says after becoming angry that the Somali government wasn't doing anything to protect his community from illegal fishing. In the end, our only choice was to collect amongst ourselves fuel, AK-47s, and money to buy guns. Some experts say the actual root cause of piracy is tied to the destruction of the environment, which is what drove men like Abdi Qadir to the seas in the first place. We felt that we were sacrificing our lives for our country and for our people. Today, the government is more actively trying to combat illegal fishing. These maritime policemen are out in full force patrolling the waters. They come across a fishing boat that they deem suspicious. So they board it looking for weapons. They find it's all clear. Fishermen are allowed to continue on. Because so many here are starving, fleeing is often the only option. Many Somalis took to refugee camps, like one of the world's largest in neighboring Kenya. How you doing? Good. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Welcome to Dadaab. The Dadaab refugee camp is a strange purgatory, filled with people trying to create some semblance of their past. It's routines like this that bring a sense of normalcy to people like Muhammad Abukar. He lives here with his wife Habiba and their five children. He tells us he lived in an area of Somalia controlled by the terrorist group Al-Shabaab. But he says he feared starving to death more than terrorism. Between insecurity and drought, the drought is worse. If a person has food and he's killed or arrested, it's not as bad. But it's worse when someone dies of hunger. But even what little they have here is in peril. As the Kenyan government threatens to close the camp, citing national security concerns. Though returning the land to the abundance depicted in those photos from Murray Watson is remote at best, those living in Somalia are trying to make the best of the cruel hand they've been dealt and holding out hope for the next generation of Somalis. For Nightline, I'm Byron Pitts in New York. You can learn much more about the larger project Living Proof, the Human Consequences of Climate Change on ABCnews.com.